Hey guys, welcome to Jaywalk Media. This is Matt Miller, and watch what happens when these woke Democrat witnesses try to gang up on Candace Owens during this hearing and try to blame her for a tragedy. How Candace responds, nobody saw coming, shocked everybody in the room. There's a reason Candace is considered one of the most fierce conservative voices out there. But before we jump into the video, I want to ask you guys to please leave a like in the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out very much. Thank you for your support. Let's jump into the video. I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Um, to me, this feels a lot like your reaction to being named in one of these manifestos. Now, you're of course not responsible for the words of somebody writing that document. But I do think that laughing at it is a real problem because these are real families that are impacted by this violence. And I think our efforts towards talking about this have to start from a place of mutual respect which is what I've heard from, from this side of the table. Now, the reason we don't have those numbers, I want those numbers as much as you do, but the number to say the numbers don't show something is simply not supported by the data. Okay, and I have 38 seconds left, Ms. Mulligan, if you, can, if you want to respond within that time. The only thing I would add is that um, it's in the name, terrorism, domestic terrorism, it terrorizes us. It terrorizes us in our homes. It terrorizes us in our schools. Um, and, the, and to the points made by, uh, by the other panelists, it is disproportionate um, to its impact on any individual life. And it's not. You reject the idea it's something that doesn't matter or doesn't really matter. Absolutely reject. Uh, Ms. Owens, obviously, this is a gang up on you. You know, we, we're, we're giving. Uh, these witnesses the ability to do a rebuttal on you and so um, you know I I find it unfair Miss Ballou I mean you know candidly for you to show mutual respect and then you to go after Miss Owens it's not appropriate so Miss Owens you can have four minutes and 34 seconds to respond can however you yield for a second? I'll, I'll yield to the thank you uh I believe, Ms. Owens, when you used the word hilarious, it was, in, it was referencing the fact that no one had asked you a question. It wasn't to the subject matter of the hearing. Is that right? That is correct. And for ha to have another witness insinuate something that is not accurate is just not appropriate, Mr. Chairman, for how witnesses are supposed to behave in front of this committee. I also think you didn't say it doesn't matter about the subject matter of today's hearing. You said there are other subjects that matter as well, and maybe we should spend some time on those. Is that accurate? That is correct, and they matter much, 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 much more. And I have said that. I said that in my opening, and I will say it again, you know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America. And the reason that you are bringing them up in this room is because it is attempt to make the election all about race as the Democrats Not in do. my case, Ms. Owens. I'm sorry. Don't, please my, do not characterize Ms. my motive. Ms. Mr. Chairman, it's my time. Yeah, you, you've it's got, my time. You've got your time, Mr. Meadows. I'll give you three more seconds. May, Every four years, you bring up race, and you knew exactly what I meant when I said hilarious, and you just tried to do live what the media does all the time to Republicans, to our president, and to conservatives, which you tried to manipulate what I said to fit your narrative, okay? I was not referring to the subject matter that is hilarious. I said it's hilarious that we are sitting in this room today, and I've got two doctors and a missus, and nobody can give us real numbers that we can respond to so we can assess how big of a threat this is, because you know that it is not as big of a threat as you are trying to make it out to be so that you can manipulate. And the audacity of you to bring up the Christ Church shooting manifesto and make it seem as if I laughed at people that were slaughtered by a homicidal maniac, maniac is, in my opinion, absolutely despicable. And I think that we should be above that. To try to assign reality or any meaning to a homicidal maniac writing a manifesto, which, by the way, let the record show, also stated Spyro the Dragon, the child's cartoon, as a source of inspiration. He also cited Nelson Mandela as a source of information. I don't think, I don't think that Nelson Mandela has inspired mosque shootings. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong. You, are, you would rather assign meaning to a homicidal maniac than to actually address what I said to, the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. And it is ironic that you're sitting here and you're having three Caucasian people testify and tell you what their expertise are. Do I know what my expertise are? 
black in America. I've been black in America my whole life, all 30 years, and I can tell you that you guys have done the exact same thing every four years ahead of an election cycle, and it needs to stop. So the first thing that stuck out to me was the condescending tone that this first lady, actually both of these ladies used, but especially the first one, the, the tone that they use when they're talking and referring to Candace Owens is so belittling and condescending. I don't know if like woke academic types or woke elitists mean to do it if they if they intentionally change their tonality to sound as condescending and belittling as possible almost like they're talking to a two-year-old um or maybe that's just how their their voice is after years and years of thinking that they're better and smarter than everybody uh, and thinking that they're the hero that's going to change the world and give us a woke socialist utopia it's just it's very annoying to me and you could tell that it rubbed candace the wrong way for sure she gets her revenge in the end here thank god jim jordan and mark meadows uh were able to make sure that candace got her opportunity to fire back and respond to these two um and they're talking about they, they tried to pin this shooting on Candace Owens's rhetoric because she was referred to in the manifesto or whatever which is so flimsy and so weak um you know a maniac could refer to anybody like she said uh, the guy referred to Spyro the Dragon that's a classic PlayStation character uh or just other random crap that doesn't make any sense like this person's crazy you can't hold people uh sane people responsible just because a crazy person mentioned your name so that that fell flat and Candace was able to deal with that part pretty pretty quickly and easily but when she gets into it and says, look, you're trying to say, and you do this every election cycle, and they're still doing it, they're doing it ahead of this election, that the black community needs to basically be saved by white liberals. That's the Democrat Party message. And that itself is so condescending. It, it makes me so mad that, um, you know, that the Democrats take that sort of posture, like we're the saviors of minorities in America, they need government welfare, they need government programs and help um, because, you know, X, Y, Z, and, and they position themselves to be um, these these white saviors and they talk down, they think of the uh, black Americans as beneath them, like they can't think for themselves, they need to vote Democrat and they're not even allowed to think, well, maybe I support Trump, let me hear him out. Uh, Candace dismantles them, dismantles them for this. And uh, of course, this is what Candace built her entire career on, uh, and rightfully so. She did an amazing job basically being the loudest and strongest voice for black conservatives who are going to break away from the Democrat Party and say, no, we've been voting Democrat for decades. And where has it gotten us? Have the Democrats actually delivered on any of these promises? Have they made the black community better? Absolutely not. And you can do the research, listen to people like Thomas Sowell, who is a Harvard economist, very, very smart gentleman, um, who basically deconstructs the myth of the Democrat Party, great society programs, and everything that they've tried to do, the welfare state, uh, higher minimum wages, DEI, and affirmative action, how all of these things have crippled the black community and have created a permanent poverty for so many minorities and especially in the black community that um they they say you know this is supposed to help you but that's not the results and the democrats don't care about the results because they're using this myth to stay elected they're using the myth to stay in power and it's disgusting it, it really is shameful candace also says the you know in her opinion she sees that the true threats to the black community and the true enemies of black prosperity are fatherlessness and broken families and and basically things that the black community can do within itself to help strengthen its community to help strengthen its uh, family bonds and and the family the black family unit and that this would if they if the black community focused on this rather than voting democrats as the answer to their problems this would do so much more to help the black community tangibly and actually drive real results, uh, building black small businesses, creating a better economy, a more hospitable socioeconomic situation for inner city, inner city communities. And this stuff is real. It's, it's get your hands dirty sort of stuff. It's not a quick fix 
like the Democrats have been promising and failing to deliver. Um, so, and you got to applaud and respect so many of these brave black conservatives who have stepped out of the conformity of voting Democrat and actually voiced these opinions uh, at great risk to themselves and, and their, their self-image, their reputation. Uh, but they are boldly speaking against this and trying to get the truth out, just like Candace Owens does. Um, you know, I got a lot of respect for her. She does a great job with what she does. Uh, so anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this clip in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you get notified when we post brand new videos. Thank you guys again for your support and I'll see you in the next video.